Who is the stranger that you have only met once in your life but you still remember? 1986. A year after graduating from a tiny college on Idaho, I was at Disneyland with a high school buddy. I was totally convinced that I saw a college friend, Adam, in line at Pirates of the Caribbean. I kept waving at him, but he looked at me like I was out of my mind. My high school friend tried to talk me down, saying that Adam clearly had no idea who I was. It's not him, everyone has a twin yada, yada, yada. The line finally snakes around to where I am standing right next to Adam so I tap him on the shoulder and ask hey, aren't you Adam? And he says no, I'm his twin brother Aaron. 34 years later and I still tell that story at parties. I only met Aaron once, in 1986, in line of pirates, but I do wish him and Adam a very happy birthday on Facebook. I met my husband's doppelganger once. The man looked exactly like my husband. I was with someone at the hospital waiting for their medical transport to pick us up and I saw who I thought was my husband across the street. My husband was supposed to be at work so I was confused. I called out to him but he didn't respond. My patient and I walked over to him but I stopped short a few feet away because I started to realize maybe it wasn't actually him. His clothes were different and this man was assisting someone in caregiving type role my husband absolutely would not do that. The guy noticed me staring at him and so I explained why and even showed him a picture of my husband. He swore that was a picture of him and this was all some practical joke. I had to show him pictures of my husband and I together for him to realize the pictures were not of him. This man could have been his identical twin. I often think of that encounter and how insane it was. I also think of the astronomical chances that not only did my husband have a doppelganger but that we lived in the same city for a while and I happened to cross paths with him. Not a complete stranger but a classmate in my first year at uni. We shared some classes but didn't really speak to each other besides the casual greetings. One morning she got a call on her cell phone, came back to the classroom visibly upset, gathered her things and left. I never saw her again after that. Fourteen years later, I still think randomly about it sometimes. I was having a rough day and I thought I'd get an ice cream to cheer myself up. I was standing in the line and this old lady looked at me and asked if I was okay. I said I was fine and just had a rough day. I got up to the front to get my ice cream and she tells the cashier, I've got this young man, he's had a rough day. She smiles at me and says enjoy your ice cream. I still think of her whenever I have a rough day. I send her my good vibes. Once I was walking to work past a homeless shelter pickup spot. It was a sunny day, middle of summer. A small lady was standing on the sidewalk wearing rain boots, a yellow raincoat and wrapped completely in a blue vinyl tarp. As I walked by her, she leaned into me, looked me in the eye and said, fish monster. I still think about her. Did she think I was a fish monster? Was she concerned that I had seen a fish monster? Perhaps she felt I was unprepared, and her questioning tone was more about if I'd heard about the potential of fish monsters. Such a surreal complex interaction in just two words. One thing I know for certain is that whatever the fish monster status was, she was clearly the best prepared of everyone present. When I was a kid, I flew by myself for the first time. At the airport, when I was about to check in, I spotted an elderly lady looking at me. Deeply. At first I thought I accidentally hit her or something, so I asked if she needed anything. She nodded. Didn't give it much importance so I just checked in and headed to my plane. Later, already on the plane, I see the very same lady, looking for her seat. Of course I helped her and asked her what number her seat was. She handed me her ticket. B37. I'll never forget it because I was in C37. She sat right next to me. I was scared. I was a kid, and I wasn't used to coincidences. Anyway, long flight. When we arrived and were waiting for the plane to land for us to head out, she finally says you know, you really look like my daughter, I even thought you were her. But she passed away five years ago, silly me. Here, this is her with my grandkids. She handed me her phone with a zoomed in picture. I was paralyzed when I saw her. She looked exactly like me. But she was 28 and I was 10. I couldn't even talk. Now that I am older, every time I look in the mirror for my birthday, I remember that lady and the picture. I am a living photo of her daughter. Every year that goes by, is a year that I look more like that woman in the picture. When I turn 28, I hope this memory will finally scare me less. I was on my way back from Disneyland Paris, 
sat in the airport and a guy beside me was typing away on his laptop. A little curious at what he was writing I peeked over and saw the title The Last Letter I'll Ever Write. I was frozen for a few minutes, I'm 24 and I had absolutely no idea what to do. I thought maybe he was a writer and if I ask he'll look stupid. Eventually though I turned round to him and said, look man, I really hope I'm making a fool of myself, but are you okay? Turns out he and his long term partner had broken up, and they were meant to be coming on this holiday, that he'd now come on with his dad. He blamed himself and he'd been going to therapy for a while to get out of a a pretty dark place but some days were better than others, and writing the letters was an exercise from his therapist. We chatted for a bit, about her, his dad, me, life in general. Turned out his brother lived nearby me and frequented a coffee shop right by where I used to live. Eventually my plane got called, and we hugged and I told him I really hope things get better for him and that at the very least I'd had a lovely time talking to him. We left there and I still wonder what happened to him. I hope he's happy now, I hope that he's managed to find some good in the world again. But I guess I'll never know for sure. When I was young, maybe 5, my mom got really sick and was screaming in pain as she drove me and herself to the hospital, no one else was with us. When we got there, she passed out in the car. I ran up to the hospital and got a wheelchair. She managed to somehow flop herself into the chair and passed out again. The hospital was uphill and I was too weak to push her, she was too heavy. A stranger came out of nowhere, wheeled her in and made enough ruckus to get her immediate attention. She spent the next two months in the hospital. I never saw that guy again, but I think about him all the time and I'd like to thank him one day. I once saw my exact double in a Barnes & Noble. We saw each other from a far distance, locked eyes, gave a slow head nod to each other, and kept going without saying a word. Sometimes I wonder how he is doing. In my early 20s I needed a lot of attention and didn't have a smartphone, 2012-ish, I was late to the game, and I also didn't have many friends, so I'd go sit outside this Starbucks and drink iced tea and journal. I really was writing, but I was also looking for someone to talk to me. And I got it. He was much much older, a little run down, but had bright eyes and the gift of gab. Let call him Ken. I was insufferably into myself, and during our conversation he asked what I was into, men, women, or what. I replied, being the edgy little art chick I was, I'm into men, women, and trees. I will never ducking forget how his face changed. His eyes widened, his eyebrows came up in the center, his mouth fell open ever so slightly and his tongue protruded a bit over his lower teeth. Trees? You too? He was serious. I didn't know what to do so I pretended I was serious and was treated to a half hour account of his sexual relations with trees. I never used that line again. We are 8 years down the road and I think of this moment at least once a week. When I was in high school, I used to have a recurring dream about a really cute girl. She wasn't my girlfriend or anything but from time to time she would always be in them and I would wake up happy and just feel happy. Flash forward to my second year of college, I meet her. Short bobbed hair, bangs, beautiful face like she had just come out of a painting, a Chinese Mona Lisa. She was even more beautiful than my dreams. She occasionally passed me by on campus, always crossing paths and never in the same direction. I'd always wanted to say something but never knew what to say or if I should say anything at all. Finally, my senior year of college rolls around and she strolls right into my English seminar on 19th century British lit and takes a seat next to me. I was flabbergasted. She was in my major and it was clear we had a similar interest in literature and here she was sitting next to me. It was like destiny pushing us together and then I spent my whole final semester never speaking to her. That was it. I never saw her again, never dreamed about her again. I still think about her every so often, what could have been. That was 10 years ago now. When I was a kid we didn't have a lot of money, so we often shopped at thrift stores. What I loved about that was that you could get 10 books for a dollar, so I would plant myself in front of the book section and make piles of which one I wanted to get and then decided after I'd gone through them all. One day an older lady saw me sitting with my piles and asked if I liked to read. I told her I did and showed her a few of the books I found that I liked. She smiled and then pulled a dollar out of her purse, handed it to me and said, promise me that you'll keep reading. I was so happy and immediately stood up and said that I would. She smiled and walked away and I went back to my piles able to pick out an extra 10 books to take home. It was just a small act of kindness for her, 
but for me having a random stranger encourage my love of reading and making me promise to never stop definitely had a lot to do with my continued love of reading. This was over 20 years ago, but I still think of her whenever I buy a new book.